to a brand new video guys my name is Timmy the Toy Time King and <clears throat> we have managed to be able to watch Gasquick versus Shane Gould in Oras PU for uh, PUPL 5 week 1 as uh, Kinglers versus uh, I always forget what team they're facing anyways <clears throat> uh, it's just turn 3 right now to be honest and I'm not the best at Oras PU so uh, yeah but as this game is going on uh, Gasquick swaps out into Leafion, but Golem's able to get all the rocks. Now here, Golem is likely as sturdy, so he's never going to get one shot by anything. But the play Shane Gould can obviously make is going out into Roselia because that is probably the best switch in. But this could be Swords Dance Leafion if I recall correctly. Like in Auras, it runs like SD and some other shit. I can't really. I I don't play Auras that well to be honest, so I don't really know. But yeah, it could be SD into like. Maybe double edge, because obviously there's no Z moves, so breaking power is heavily reduced. But you know, you're still able to do damage. But chat out comes in and it goes for knockoff, which is pretty nice because now you're able to outspeed. So he brings in his choice scarf, and that is just eliminated now. And Leafon is able to outspeed, assuming that is jolly nature. So yeah, that's pretty nice for uh, Gas Quick. So the first one of the match is down, and uh. Shane Gould has lost his Chattel, which is quite nice because Chattel is able to outspeed mons like uh, uh, or Monferno and potentially Mr. Mime and just do a lot of work with Boom Burst because not a lot switches in to that. So, yeah, pretty good uh, from Gasquake here. Uh, obviously, you know, right now, Shane Gould could bring out his Monferno or even Kadabra because if he brings out Monferno, he basically just confirms that Scarf. Yeah, so he does bring out Monferno here. This is probably a free U-turn on Shane's side, to be honest. But obviously the safe play is to bring out Golem, obviously. Because uh, Golem uh, resi no, it doesn't even resist bug. It resists the Flare Blitz that's going to be coming out in case that comes out. And uh, what do you call it? Yeah, it's just the safest play, to be honest. So yeah, he does bring out Golem here. And uh, what do you call it? Monferno does go for the U-turn, as I've just said. So right now, Roselia can come out, maybe. Or Kadabra, to be honest, because Kadabra most likely has something like Energy Ball or something. Or he brings out his own Golem. Uh, either way, Kadabra is probably the best play uh, to bring out right now, because it could be like Sash Counter or something, or Energy Ball. Uh, but yeah, I think Shane Gould is going to apply the pressure right now with this uh, next turn, what he's going to bring out. Okay, so this is going pretty well. Uh... Yeah, leave a like down below if you guys do enjoy this video. Uh, we'll appreciate it. Okay. So, the U turn is here. <clears throat> U turn was definitely the play. The Golem was definitely the play as well. Maybe Gasquake could have predicted the U turn coming out, but again, you don't want to sack your Leafion because it actually does pretty well against Golem. Even though Pelipper kind of does kind of well, you kind of do need chip on that golem uh, for, what do you call it, uh, sturdy to be deactivated. But yeah, he brings out Roselia here. And Roselia is able to outspeed, assuming that has like speed investment, but uh, what do you call it? Yeah, so he brings out Monferno. And goes for Leaf Storm, which does a good chunk to Monferno, actually. <coughs> and here... If he has rocks on his Monferno, let's say, he goes for it now. And then, or you can just go for free damage. But again, Golem is most likely the the play that comes in right now. Because you don't want to sack Rosalia here. Stealth Rocks could be a nice play as well. Uh, but yeah, if he if Gakuit believes Golem's coming out, then he better click that close combat or something. Because nothing on his squad takes close combat well at all. And I don't think Shingle wants to get rid of his Rosilia yet. So if he has close combat, I would probably go for it this turn. But we'll see. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is going to be an intense game. Uh, I'm enjoying this. Like, yeah, this is the thing that I don't have when I'm recording PUPL games. Uh, like watching the replays. Because this is live right now. I can state my own opinions and whatnot on what plays could be possibly made in the battles live so i do like recording battles like this to be honest so yeah that's pretty good uh yeah i look you want to see if my sound is recording on my obs uh yeah it is so that's fine 
sometimes it doesn't record and then i'm just speaking i watch the video afterwards and i'm just like for fuck's sake that's a bit annoying but yeah i think shing go out yeah so he does bring in golem here and he does go for slack off so uh don't know what moveset set this monfono could be running as i said i knew nothing about auras whatsoever uh so he does bring in golem here and i thought that was pretty obvious that the golem was coming out he could have gone for like a damage attack there but his monfono would have been like a, a bit of a disadvantage but what's what's golem gonna do now golem is quite a problem because he doesn't really have any switch-ins to it like I guess Leafeon, I suppose, cause high base defense, it'll take a Stone Edge. There's no reason for him to go for Earthquake, cause number one Pelipper exists. Uh, yeah, and he could catch out a Pawnee, but yeah, what does he do to this U-turn here? I'm guessing if you have it, and then you go out into uh Leafeon and hope you. I don't think you'll take a freaking uh Stone Edge well from an offensive golem but we do know his rocks and i'm guessing there's max attack max speed on the golem so yeah he's calling me oh wait give me a second guys So I was right in saying that uh, Leafeon was a switch in, but again, Stone Edge is not a good switch into Stone Edge at all. So Monferno does come out and he goes for Leaf Blade and that does good chunk to Monferno, but oh, it's actually life for Monferno. Uh, okay, that's a bit easier then because you're able to outspeed. 41%. Uh, yeah, Monferno is not living the next one. Uh, I think Leafeon's able to tank a Muck Punch, but I'm not checking calcs, so I'm just guessing at the top of my head, but hopefully it does. Because that would be a bit nice if you can get rid of Monferno here. There isn't exactly any switch-ins to this one. Uh, apart from like Roselia or something. If you go for the Leaf Blade, that is... Yeah, sorry I went quiet there for like a couple of seconds. Someone was just calling me up uh, to do something. But yeah, I'll, I'll finish this before I do anything else. Because it's a PEPL game. And it's one of the last ones that we'll be seeing this week. Uh, I actually didn't get to cover GA versus Chris Loud, which is a bit sad. I did watch a replay, but I didn't want to. I didn't feel like recording, so yeah, I'm definitely I'm gonna make up for it by watching this game. Uh, I don't know who's gonna win. Uh, it, it could go any way to be honest, but uh, maybe Gasquick wins. Oh, okay, so Mark Punch does not kill as I've predicted, and Monferno is down. So that's the second one down. Gasquick kinda has the advantage here, to be honest. Again, I do believe Golem is a problem for his team because there isn't any reliable switch-ins to Golem. I want to lose his uh, Leafy on. There's no ground resist, so he's well. There's Pelipper, but that's asleep. So you you just click Stone Edge again. But yeah, second one of Shingle's uh, team is down. Uh, what you can do now is obviously bring out Kadabra because that's his fastest Pokemon, and kill Leafy on. Uh, but he could bring a Pawniard here but if it's sash counter you like go for the attack and uh yeah you're dead or it does kadabra get focus blast i don't think it does because yeah kadabra comes out now i need to see uh focus blast i don't think kadabra gets focus blast so he could sack leafy on here or we'll save it for later but again his play is maybe bringing out poignard because again unless it's like hp fighting or something then uh Kadabra shouldn't really do anything to Pawniard. But yeah. Bringing out Pawniard might be the play. Uh, excuse me there. Yeah. So I definitely think uh, Gasquake should bring out Pawniard right now. And if he does double out into that Golem. That's very good play on Shingle's part to be honest. And yeah. Because again. No reliable. Like Golem is. Edgequake stab is a very annoying to deal with. 
especially and your ground your two ground resists one is asleep and the other one is quite low so yeah i'm guessing gasquake is uh making these move i, ca I can't tell because time isn't on but i'm guessing shane Gould has made his decision and gasquake is probably thinking about his next move so we're just gonna have to wait and see but yeah i definitely uh, i definitely think uh poignard is the player so yeah yeah pelipper comes in actually which i was not expecting uh shadow ball's there so is he sacking pelipper here all right i guess sacking pelipper is fine because it doesn't really do anything in this game but yeah he can easily get a free switching on poignard now just don't, just judging by shadow ball is it gonna be a counter oh, i can't even tell but yeah poignard comes in now and just clicks like knock off or pursue or something and Kadabra dies unless it's like sashed or something. Should be sashed to be honest. If Ponya is actually quite common in Aura, so I wouldn't be surprised if Kadabra is sashed. But yeah, what he definitely brings out now is uh, this. Sc probably Scarf Mr. Mime. Probably will clean up after Kadabra is dead. Because once Kadabra is dead, I think Mr. Mime does a lot of work. Because you kill Roselia with your attacks. Uh, just need to weaken this golem honestly because sturdy you're not gonna want... yeah okay golem's in maybe this is scarfed or something golem comes in actually sucker punch i'm guessing this could be sucker punch actually we'll have to see oh boy <sighs> You wouldn't bring out a golem unless it was Sucker Punch. Because if that's Life Orb, Shadow Ball's going to do a ton. Definitely has to be Sucker Punch, I'm guessing. I don't even know. Okay, Psychic. Okay. Oof, yeah, it's sashed. As I've predicted. Is it in rain? Cost up, I swear. Oh, it's Rocky Helmet. <laughs> Why am I talking about Custap? I already saw his item. Anyways, uh, Sash uh, thing again, Mister Mime. If that quick has scarf, Mister Mime, that does that puts in a lot of work. To be honest, obviously I have to weaken Ursa Ring because that thing's not gonna get one shot by Mister Mime with Psychic or anything. Uh, okay. Hey. Oh, why am I so tired? Ju judging by Rocky Helm, I doubt a sucker punch. So he's probably gonna sack his golem here, get in Pawniard or something, and then yeah. Okay, so golem's down. What comes out now is uh, he brings out Monferno, then the scarf Monferno. Okay, Monferno's in. So that is the scarfer. Or it just goes for Mutt Punch because you're not gonna, yeah, you have priority. So, no, it can't be scarfed. I'm just, I'm just talking out of my ass at this point, honestly. It's slack off. Why would it be scarfed? Either way, it goes for Mutt Punch and Kadabra is down. Uh, Golem's in. This is the perfect time to freaking attack the Golem, in my opinion. But yeah, I think that's quick wins this game to be honest i don't see how he actually loses this because yeah i i honestly don't see how gas quick loses unless it's like quick feet ursa ring and your scarfer which i'm hoping is mr mime uh let you know yeah it should be should be fine it should be fine for gas quick to be honest he's playing quite well okay leafion's in and he brings out also oh, okay yeah quick feet that's quick feet so that might be a problem for his team. Big problem. Because most likely this thing has close combat. Oof, this might be a bit close, I won't lie. It, this being quick feet is a problem. Because this has close combat. 
to hit Pornyard, uh facade and whatnot. Unless you want to bank on Mr. Mime landing like focus blocks or something if he has it. Uh, I'm going to calc this, obviously. Just to see. Uh, Ursa Ring. Max attacks, max speed. Uh, Psy Shock, 2 hit KO. How much does Focus Blast do? Focus Blast does... Ah, uh, okay. Guaranteed kills. So he's going into his mime to hopefully land a Focus Blast. If he predicts that... Oh, the mad predicts! Very nice, very nice, very nice, very nice. Very nice, very nice. Very nice from Gasquick. Very nice. How did Rose live? Oh, that was that was pretty slick. That is very nice. So Rose is gone. It's just Ursaring. Mark Punch. Yeah, you save you save this. Uh, okay, I'll think about this. Okay. Yeah. Oof. That's very nice. For gas quick. Because single obviously feared the focus last. Even if it has a 70% chance of landing, he goes down to Roselia to take that, but it goes for the psychic, and then it managed to get chipped like that. So, yeah, that's very nice. Goal, you need Mime to win this game. But it's a free earthquake spam, that's the problem. Yeah, that's that's the major problem. I, I say, what do you do in this situation? You swap out. No, 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 no. I have an idea. I have an idea. If Golem comes out, you attack it, and then you attack it with Monferno if you have close combat. Then Ursaring comes out. No, but it won't go for close combat then. Okay, so you attack it. So if Golem comes out, you attack it with Psychic, you die. Bring in Ponyard, go for the damage, ring out. And somehow, and Ponyard somehow has to kill Golem. And then you click close combat, and then you might be in range of Mock Punch from Monferno. That's that's a way I'm seeing it, to be honest. How much does Psychic do to Ursa Ring? So that's Psy Shock. And Psychic is stronger than that. So Psychic is a 2 hit kill. And facade guaranteed kills. What does Shane do here? Yeah, so he brings in Golem. If I'm gas quick, I definitely attack this right now. Definitely attack this. I'm hoping Ponyard. Yeah, Ponyard has to outspeed. I'm hoping it does. It, I'm just guessing this is Scarf. It, it might not even be Scarf. But it has to be. It has to be. Hmm. Yeah, but I think my way of how the next three turns are going to go out might be right. Okay, so you go for Sucker Punch there. As you go for the attack, yeah. Uh, that's fine. And you, Gasquick has to stay in. And then hope. He has to bring out Ponyard now. Hope that has like Iron Head or something. Go for the kill. And then you're forced to go for close combat. And then, yeah, I think he can win. I think he can win. Just... I'm hoping he has, hoping he has a uh, iron head on his. Yeah, so he brings up Ponyard now. There's no. Yeah, so that comes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My my events came out exactly as I planned, exactly as I've planned. Close combat. Oh, he actually goes for facade. Yeah, that's GG. That's GG. Go, good job from Gasquick. Very nice, very nice. So as I've said, those last few turns, I called, I called it. I called it. I, I knew that was the way he had to win that game. And I would have played it just like that, to be honest. So, very good win from Gasquake there. Shane played well, but... Yeah, that play on the Roselio, dude, that was a straight fire. Honestly, that was very, very good from Gasquake. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, tell me if you prefer me going over replays or obviously watching the games live. I would like to know what you guys think of that. But I do like covering games live because it's just cool. It's just really cool for me. Especially when you make those plays like that as well. And it's just brilliant, man. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video yet again. Please leave a like down below. And I'll see you guys in the next PUPL video. Peace.